Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing today? This is Grace with Grace on a Journey Channelings. Welcome to the newcomers. And to those of you returning, my fellow travelers, welcome back. You are appreciated, valued, and this is how I show gratitude. So, I was inspired really early today. Usually, I go into meditation and I'm like, okay, where are we going to go with it today? What inspiration are you going to give me today? What do I need to think about today? In order to put things together and follow that flow and be open to receive these messages to share with you. But today, it just took no effort. And I think the reason why is because there's a need, right? There's a lot of you that are experiencing hardships and that can be categorized as victims or overcomers or or those that are just entering this world of spirituality, but are open to a better understanding, not knowing the reason why you were called here, the reason why you're attracted to being here, confirmation, is because you are being prepared for what's to come. I know what I'm speaking of because when I was being prepared of what's to come, I had no clue. In fact, I was judgmental of what I didn't know. I had fear of the unknown, which made me defensive towards it. I recall there was a time I connected with some friends who were much more familiar with the spiritual world. But I knew them through a professional setting. They were very much into women empowerment and so forth. So I was invited to one of their networking events. And I attended And I remember once everybody was sharing about their journey, their spiritual journeys, right? I believe that was the last day of that. It wasn't a conference, so I guess it was a retreat, right? And they all shared their experiences and you know, their practices and what seemed to empower them. One of them was dancing. They were very into certain types of music like drums and dancing not How people are doing it in a trendy manner, but just releasing themselves, just flowing to the music, not worrying about what they look like, who's going to laugh at them, if they look strange. Nah. They just flow to the music. They just released whatever it was. That was 
burdening them. And the instructor that was doing it, I think this is, well, I don't think I know. (laughs) This is why all of these practices were introduced. It's because... There were instructors there. There were life coaches there. There were um, those that were in the business of selling essential oils, um, holistic medicines. There were Doctors who practice Eastern medicine. It was like a very organic setting, right? Everyone had something to offer. My offering came in the capacity of artistic creation. But that opportunity allowed us to get to know each other and then be able to connect with each other if for some reason I would like to purchase some essential oils or, and I can't remember all of their, the names of the the companies that they took part of, but there was another woman (laughs) I can't forget her because I spent a good penny on a blender that they were selling for um, to make smoothies and stuff like that. But I, I remember making that investment and said, wow, I just I think this is the right thing to do. It's going to help me to be healthy. It's gonna, I mean, when I think about it today, I'm like, my goodness, you know. I didn't necessarily have to buy that one in particular. They have them all over the market for a better price. But I was just so enthused about, you know, the samplings that came from it. Like, utilize, not even utilizing sugar, like sugar free, and the smoothies were tasting good. And you know, different things. And I remember how it made me feel. Yes, I felt more energized. I felt more alert. And then when I did take some sense of the lavender oils and, you know, the eucalyptus oils and that aromatherapy, that aromatherapy did play some type of effect. In my life, I felt more relaxed. Um, And some sense help you to feel more awake. There were some floral scents that they used to make you feel like joyous in the moment. Like I said, it was quite an experience. It may have been a once in a lifetime opportunity for me because I hesitate into connecting with others as much as I was a social butterfly at one time. And don't get it twisted. As much as I was interested in going to things that gave us an opportunity to grow and learn and experience different things, I was always reserved. I was always that type of person that people could misunderstand as far as friendliness is concerned. And again, that's a misunderstanding. I know myself to be one of the most down-to-earth people that I know. 
But I also am very sensitive to energy. And some people give out a very shallow vibe. And due to that, I step back and I push back. I don't give eye contact. (laughs) I don't smile. You know. I don't make small talk. And it's not because I'm not friendly. Because you see me in a setting with my people. And when I say my people, trust and believe it's not my complexion of people. It's not my nationality of people. When I say my people, I'm speaking of my energy of people. Because there are people that look like me that offend me. There are people with my same bloodline that hate me. And that's why the true family is the spiritual family. It's not That there is not a connection between you and your blood relatives. But as you mature, you find yourselves connecting more and more to your existence as a spiritual being and to your spiritual family they understand you better they welcome you in spirit and in health they're not here to judge you but they hold you accountable they're there for you when you have tears they're there for you When you need a congratulations, when you need that was a good job. But due to so many facades that people play. Just because they dress the part, they have their hair wrapped. (laughs) They're dressed in all white. They wear beads does not mean they're trustworthy. And this is why I take my time, right? This is why I'm not so quick to assemble with just anybody. This is why when I receive an email, I talk to God first. This is why when I get a phone call, And your number is not recognized. You must get screened first. You leave a message if you want an answer. Or response. Or any interaction. (laughs) Energy is contagious. So it's important for me and it's important for you to protect yourselves. Not allow these low vibrations, these energetic vampires, these agents of the dark to come and expose you to their sickness and diseases. Because they bring dis-ease to your journey. And this is why it's important for us to stay grounded, right? Yes, we live in this world, right? But we do not have to be uniform to this world. When you are in the awareness that you are a spiritual being and you're just having a human experience... 
Your priorities shift. And you begin to take care of your spiritual needs as priorities. And whatever else comes in the human experience comes when they come. Even in the human experience that we partake in, there's steps to that too. Levels to that too. My family, after God and myself, my family comes first. And again, family is who? My spiritual family. There are relatives that I don't see unless it's a funeral <laughs> or a wedding. Okay? I don't hear from them on New Year's. I don't hear from them on Christmas. They don't hear from me on their birthdays. And I never heard from them on a birthday. And that's all right. There are priorities. There will always be love there. But there are priorities, people. And when we get out of order and we begin to prioritize things that we should not and people that we should not and places that we should not be prioritizing, that is when We get unbalanced. Things begin to get out of order. Sometimes we feel something's wrong. We know something's wrong and we can't even put our finger on it. What, what is making me feel this imbalance? That's calling you to release. Release and step back. I'm being told to tell you that you can never ask for too much help from your spiritual support team. If you need to connect with them, Throughout the day. Never feel as if. Oh my goodness. I already asked for this. I already asked for that. I Can't you do anything on your own? No. It's a spiritual support. Team. They're there for a reason. And that's for your well-being. You decide, however, if you want that connection. Because those of you that choose to fall back, nah, I don't see you, I don't know you. That's a choice. But when I see God, sometimes I see God in you. Sometimes I see him in the stars. Sometimes I see him in the sun. Sometimes I see him in an act of kindness. Sometimes I see him in a blessing. Sometimes I see him In favor over my life. See, my spiritual support team, I began to see them when I started having the visions that I had that warned me 
that gave me foresight that I was in danger. I began to see them when I would have the intention to stay at this job location and I was told no. You've played your role here. It's time to go. Not understanding it was because I was in danger. It was because someone I thought I could trust sold me out. Gave people that wanted me killed. My work schedule, my address. He was the ultimate Judas. But what I didn't see, my spiritual support team saw, right? I saw them when they said what they said. And I believed in what they said. And it came to pass. The prophecies that were whispered. I see my tribe, my soul family, and those that have similar experiences, those that just don't speak on it, but been there, done that. Those that had to come out of the fire. Still in the mindset that I must give gratitude to God. He got me through it. He got me to this side of the tunnel. Today, the title will be Protection Overview Boot Camp. Some of these things that you will hear, you've already come across. Some of you will hear these things for the first time. Understand that this is an opportunity for all wherever they are on their journey, whether they are at the end of the line, halfway there. Wherever they are. Whether they come in truth, in sincerity, or with opposing views, with malintent. Whether they come to steal, kill, or destroy, these messages are for all. Some of you don't know what you're calling in. You don't know what you're called for. But as I called God in, 
Not just my heart. But my mind, body, and soul. My behaviors, my expressions, my connections. My understanding, my development. My... Progress. He began to make these changes that were necessary for this point of the journey. This is why I'm okay with the entire journey. From where I started to where I am now. Because when reviewed, you will see the growth. When you reviewed, you will say there is a God. When reviewed, you'll say there is hope. If God can do it for her, God can do it for me. And I was programmed like. Most of you hearing this. Under belief systems that were not. Uniform to. These truths. These philosophies that I know to be true. In my life, not because I read the story, not because someone preached it, not because I heard of it, but because it's happening in my life. Because I'm experiencing the growth, because I'm experiencing the protection, because I'm experiencing the foresight, the knowledge, the wisdom, the grace on my journey. And this is why I walk in a renewed faith. I walk in courage. I walk with the spirit of bravery, confirmation. Because I know I'm not alone. As a matter of fact, I'm awakened to the fact that I was never alone. I was always protected. It may have seemed as if I was abandoned. Why? God, why did you let this happen? Why why did you let this happen? And again, I'll remind you, life is an experience that comes in patterns. And if you notice in this season, you experience this hardship and this season you experience this hardship and this season you experience this hardship and this season you haven't. That means you learned the lesson. It took three seasons, but you learned the lesson. So the cycle could end. This is why this man lied to you or This woman lied to you and this man lied to you or this woman. And this is why it happened over and over. Were you utilizing your gift of intuition? Were you utilizing prayer? Were you utilizing communication? It 
investigation. Were you utilizing those things? Were you walking in love or were you walking in lust? Were you walking in vanity or were you walking in spirituality? Were you walking in lack? Pause. Is it because of what she could do for you? Or what he could do for you? Is it because you needed the money? Or was it the status? Is it because you needed a home? Because you chose not to be homeless? Or is it because you were aligned spiritually to that soul? You were both on progressive mode. You were both attracted to the light. Is it because you were trauma bonding? Some of you escaped the connection of trauma bonding. When I say connection, I mean the understanding of what really was going on. You just Wanted to help. You just knew you could help. You just. Whether or not you called yourself a healer. Whether or not. You were conscious of it. But you wanted to help. You wanted to make things better. You knew you had words of encouragement. You knew you had a story of. I got through it. You knew you were familiar. With some of the experiences. That in turn made you feel a connection You can lean on me And the problem with these types of connections is They're not balanced as give and take Usually there's just the taker And then there's just the giver That's because we're not protecting ourselves. See, when we live in a manner that's balanced, our crown chakra is open. We receive our downloads. What we're overlooking becomes highlighted. When we're open to see With our minds With our physical body And with our spiritual eyes
things that were weren't meant for you to see because they were in the dark because they were meant to be secrets because the joke was on you you began to have foresight and see the blindfolds come off When you begin to use your throat and say what you need to say and set the boundaries that you need to set and enforce them. When you begin to love yourself, not just with part of your heart, but with all of your heart. When you begin to weigh down, yes, I love her, I love him. In my love for her, in my love for him, I don't sacrifice me. Let me repeat that. See, I was programmed like you. I was pro- confirmation. I was programmed to put everyone before me like you. I was programmed to believe that's what good is. That's what nice is. It is at my expense. But in the renewal of the essence of me, after the dark night of the soul, after I was let down one last time, See, the deliverance doesn't come until that one last time when enough was enough, when there's nowhere else to go but up. You felt so low because of someone that you trusted, because a group that you thought had your back, because Because you trusted them with your life And they let you down They risked Your mind Your body Your soul They didn't protect you In fact they ridiculed you Made attempt to murder you. You see when you reach these depths. That little voice inside. That can barely say. Help. Sometimes it doesn't even make it to the throat. But you're shouting help internally. God heard you. God heard you. And if you're still standing today is because God healed you. Right? But it's because you followed his instruction, his guidance, his wisdom. It's because you was open to it. It's because you left being closed minded in the back. And the reality of being open minded 
is your future. These opportunities when people are having opportunities connecting with those that are chosen and can't fake it. Are not done in vain. They're done in the philosophy of each one teach one. The goal is to raise the vibration. So as you experience, share your stories of deliverance. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot of change to adapt to. But all you're required to do is one day at a time. And when those moments seem overwhelming, All those that are experiencing anxiety, you can encourage yourself by saying, all that's required of me is the next right thing. As I decide to participate in this activity today, is it for my highest good? As I decide to hang out with these people today, as I decide to pick up my phone to gossip with this one today, if, as I decide to give myself to this man today, as I decide to risk my life today is it for my highest good some of you have been asking for a map Use discernment. Take pauses in life. Stop competing. Before you say yes out loud. Did you say yes inside? Confirmation. When being invited to that gathering? When saying yes, I will marry you? When saying yes, I'll accept that business proposal? Did you say yes inside? Did your spirit say yes? Did it align with your highest good? Because we're conditioned, we're programmed to people please.
And because we're not protecting ourselves, because we are sitting, eating, playing, connecting with these lower vibrations, we become more and more exposed and given more and more opportunities to experience more and more regression. But when you learn to see yourself for yourself and you begin to define yourself for yourself, And you become, you begin to make space for yourself. You will walk in wisdom. You will make better decisions. You will experience more wins than losses. It will require you being open-minded. It will require you being comfortable with being alone. It's just for a season. It's just preparation. Is part of the calling. So before you say yes next time, whatever you questioned in whatever department of your life, listen for that first yes inside. Or is it, ugh, I really don't want to. But in conformity, you say, yeah, I'll go. I really don't want to take that drug. It's a gateway drug, but yeah, I'll try it. I, I really don't know you well enough that I should be engaging in any type of sexual activity with you. But yeah, everyone else is doing it. I want to be seen with you. I want to be in your circle. You can make my fantasies come true. How are you weighing your decisions? How are you determining is this in alignment with my highest good? How are you protecting yourself? One of the first things you must do if you want to protect yourself is to research it. And there are many ways to protect yourself, but our focus today is on spiritual protection. Because that leans towards every area of your life anyway, having you are spiritual beings. If you are spiritually protected, then your finances are protected, then your relationships are protected, then your professional life is protected, then your ministry is protected because you are protected. Essentially, as a spiritual being. 
So in all your protection, seek spiritual protection. First. Just a recommendation. One of the ways you can protect yourself is cleanliness. Whatever's polluted, whatever's dirty, whatever smells fishy. Whatever connects you to rats. Whatever's grimy. Whatever's greedy like pigs. Whatever's dark. Whatever snake-like tendencies declutter your life. I said declutter your lives. In order to cleanse, you must make room for cleansing people, places, things. And energies. If you are in the awareness that someone is walking in karmic debt, someone is known for. And proven to align themselves with darker forces. Fraudulent activity. Judas-like. Jezebel-like tendencies. Cleanse your spaces. Cleanse your minds. Cleansing your mind would mean not lending an ear for them to pollute it. For them to manipulate you. For them to do spell work on you without your knowledge. Cleansing your space would mean you're blocked. You're going to stay blocked. You will always be blocked. No explanations needed. No communication needed. No closure Needed. Cleansing my body would mean keeping myself Away from whatever that is known to be detrimental. Towards my highest good.
Not putting myself in temptation's way. Not chasing waterfalls. Outgrowing naivety. Not falling for the okie doke. Oh, you want to come over? I know we're not in a relationship, but you want to come over? You want to just watch a movie? What are you talking about? We're just going to watch a movie. Might have something to eat. We're just going to talk... Just gonna watch a movie. Meanwhile, it's the opposite sex. Sometimes it's the same sex. Can we be real? Meanwhile, you are on their own territory. Grown or not, you are on their territory. Meanwhile, part of spiritual growth is self-respect. Are you respecting yourself in such opportunities of engagement? You've claimed your sobriety for some time now. But your friend got a promotion. Um, we're going out to celebrate. You know you got to come, right? I'm not going to accept a no from you. You got to come. But that, that inner voice. You hear it loud and clear. That might jeopardize your sobriety. No, but you got a people please, right? You got to say yes, right? You got to surrender to peer pressure, right? You're grown. You're grown and have the right to surrender to peer pressure, right? <laughs> Are you protecting yourself? Are you loving yourself? Are you putting Yourself as the priority, as it should be. Energy is contagious. You broke, right? You know some friends that know how to make that fast money, right? I'm bored. Why not I go hang out with them? Why not? It's just hanging out. They're my friends. I grew up with them. They my rider dies. 
I could really be myself with them. I don't have to pretend I'm a church boy. Then you find yourself in a new career. Did you protect yourself? Did you ignore the voices inside that said, Nah, man, that's not going to be good for you. There are many experiences in life. And essentially, you have to decide for yourself what's right for you. But as you decide for yourself what's right for you, consider Am I protected as I move forward? Those of you that want wisdom, there you have it. Am I weighing what can happen to me if this goes wrong? Or am I just in the illusion of everything will go right because in my reality, there's just positivity. (laughs) In fact, when others try to warn me, oh, you're always negative. Don't say that out loud. Don't put that on me. Bad things always happen to you because you're always considering them. You're you're boring. And so you share different experiences and different outcomes and different Truths, different legacies, differences, right? That's what makes the world goes around. Balance. There are those for the light and those that remain dark. Go in where you fit in, right? But as you play your role, stay in your lanes. I said, as you play your role, stay in your lanes. Because there are traffic stops. There are regulators. There are tickets, there are consequences, there are judges that you must face, there are debts you must pay. Stay in your lands. Don't touch God's anointed. I'm told that doesn't even need to be repeated because it must be respected the first time. Stay in your lanes.
Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Be careful what lies you tell. Be careful who you steal from. Be careful who you frame. Be careful whose reputation that you thought you could destroy. Be careful with your malintent. Be careful with your death spells. Be careful when hiring hitmen. Be careful when being in the mindset that secrets can be kept. Protect yourselves. I'd like to move the focus to the spread that I have before me. The first card Love and happiness Problems lifting Home Now, you would have thought that would be the, the goal of most of us, right? To have a happy home where we experience love. Problems are lessening and lessening. Until they're too small to even influence. What matters in life. But there are people that come from all walks of life. There's someone who told me once, you need to be in the mindset that not everyone thinks like you, not everyone sees like you, not everyone loves like you. Those words took me a long way, people. Those words saved me a lot of heartache, people. My idea of a beautiful life does not mean everyone's idea of a beautiful life. And by law of attraction, You attract when you give out the energy.
of belief. If you believe that one day you will have this house full of happiness and satisfaction, that unwavering belief, materializes what do you believe do you believe that You give happiness because you receive what you give, right? Do you give love because you receive what you give, right? Do you make your house a home because you receive what you give, right? Do you add on problems? Or remove problems? Because you receive what you give, right? I'm hearing, are you his peace or are you his heartache? (laughs) Are you her peace or are you her heartache? Because you receive what you give, right? Next card is, let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. Don't underestimate your angelic friends. I trust mine. They don't lie. (laughs) Now, I'm being led to say respect your privacy. Concerning your spiritual support team. Nobody needs to know everything. (laughs) Everything they do for you. (laughs) How much they protect you. If they don't play about you. Or how they stay ready. It's not your fault you're protected as you are. Just be in the spirit of gratitude. Confirmation. Be in the spirit of gratitude, okay? Give thanks. Give reverence, respect, honor. They will help you see things that are hidden. 
They will help you to see those that are masked, their intention, and hidden instincts. Do you know who your friends are? Something th- something you might want to think about. A mystery is to be unveiled, a new clarity around your direction is unfolding. Be willing to wait for the full reveal, but also recognize what is happening at this time. You will be gaining valuable insight into where you are and where you're being led and for what purpose. High Priestess. The next card, Jealousy. Mm. Ill will from people around you. True story. This is why You need to keep calling for the gift of discernment. But as you do that, call for the gift of unmasking. Did you hear me? You hear that every day. Call for the gift of discernment. But do you call for the gift of unmasking? Because many in your circles need unmasking okay confirmation they need unmasking they're fake they're hypocrites they're Pharisees they pretend to be holier than thou they point fingers at you they throw stones at you meanwhile They're killing you. They're stealing from you. They live their lives to defeat you. And they claim God lives in them. They claim that they're saved. Pay attention to the fruit that they carry. And the towers that fall. Seems like God saved you. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from the usual type of expectations. And let me testify that is 
true, true, and nothing but the truth. Your soulmate may come from a different culture, a different background. Was raised differently. He may look like nothing you even imagined. <laughs> but when you get to know them, You realize you are one. In every way that matters. Here and confirmations everywhere. You are one. My reference is in relation to your divine soul partner. Not just a soulmate, because what many don't know is you have more than one soulmate. And in life, you will encounter more than one soulmate. But those of you, especially those of you that are called for a spiritual mission, are part of a divine soul union. Their presence nurtures your soul. Before you love physically, love mentally, you love spiritually. In fact, there, are, there aren't really many words that can describe this type of connection. But it's worth the journey in getting there. Can I be honest? I said <laughs> it's worth it's it it's worth the energy that it takes to get there. Sometimes that means tears and deceptions and backstabbings and ah, people. Hearts that were broken. Trust that was trampled upon. Dreams that are now shattered. Communities. 
opposing you. Death spells being conducted. But do it all. God got you through it, right? And you were rewarded. And as strange as it sounds, with the experiences that I've had, in the days <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm this is so for real like the days that I've cursed because I said I cursed the day I've met you out of disgust Of the Judases and Jezebels along the way. I kid you not. When I say. My present day. Is worth the journey, y'all. I'm going to say this again. Because some of y'all. Some of y'all don't ever. Like you, you. You don't ever see yourself saying this. Because of what you've been through. I know. I know you've been through a lot. I know. Trust me. Confirmation. I know. But it was to prepare you for a season like this. To be in the maturity to receive, to appreciate, to respect, to honor. To team up. To be one. You'll realize it was worth the journey. It was worth the journey. In fact, God has been so good to me. All he did was bless me. I was in the illusion that I was stolen from, I talked about, laughed at, ridiculed. I was in the illusion, in the illusion that that I was coming up short. But God showed up right in the nick of time. And he showed out. <laughs> One day you two will be able to give thanks. With your whole heart. You'll understand that. It all happened for a reason. You'll understand that you're better where you are. Than where you were.
You'll understand that you may not have gotten here if you didn't go through what you had to go through. Would you be brave enough? Would you be confident enough? Would you be vulnerable enough? Would you be passionate enough? Your journey helped to mold you. So give thanks. Give thanks to God. I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite like the Judases and Jezebels of the day and say, I think my enemies. <laughs> See, we about being real because it takes real to get healing, right? So I give them no thanks. No thanks yesterday. No thanks today. <laughs> no thanks forevermore. But I give God eternal Thanksgiving Because only I know what God Has done for me Only I know how God Has spared my life Only I know What God helped me see People I was in a fraudulent marriage and I didn't even know it. No one cared enough to give me a phone call to tell me what was going on behind my back. And that's why they all have to be blocked. But God, I was sitting in my bedroom, people, and my eyes just closed for a second. And I literally had a vision of the Judas and his mistress on a bed having sex. I was like, what? See, that must be from the devil because cause I know I know God I know that's not happening, God, because because I don't got nothing to worry about God. God, he's an impotent man, God. So so what 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 I gotta be worried about, right? <laughs> but God knew what I didn't know. God knew the black magic that was at play. That's a confirmation. So I didn't want to believe it though. 
Right? And then I had it again. And again. And then it it went to dreams when I got warnings and from one family member to another family member to another and I, And then it happened in the music I listened to. In the conversations I would have. In the repetitive numbers I would see. I would see the sequence. The pattern of things. How it all connected. The vision I had. Was the song that I heard? Was the movie I saw last week? Was the sermon I heard today? It all connected, people. And God took me deeper and deeper and deeper in ways to uncover truths. To the point I can't be lied to today. Okay? You can say whatever you want to say. And I don't have to say nothing. Because God gives me the clarification. No, I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you how. I don't have to tell you when. I don't have to tell you telling the truth. I don't have to tell you you lying. The only thing I owe you is nothing. It wasn't a dream. I was awakened to the fact that there were seances being done on me, that there were death spells being done, animals being sacrificed. I saw it. These are things I've never experienced before in person. I've never participated in such activities in person. In fact, I've never even watched these types of movies because of the fact I don't want to and this was back then before I had a better understanding of spirituality and the power that God is in my life. But in the past, I would never watch anything that resembled that type of behavior because I didn't want to have what I called the bad dream. Because it would affect me. Because then I would say, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. A little joke, I remember... Going to see Passion of the Christ. And that's not even a horror movie, right? And it was so violent to me. <laughs> there were there were scenes, people, where my thumbs were covering my ears and my fingers were covering my eyes. <laughs> while my eyes were closed. Like I just could not take it in. Like, my friend was like, okay, why did we come here? So you made me pay for this and you didn't even watch it? Like, are you serious? (laughs) But then I didn't know that was 
going to be my reaction. So what I'm trying to say is I do not watch horror movies. I do not watch anything like that. So it's not as if something influenced me. I don't read those types of books or anything. But I had the dreams. I saw what was being done to me. I saw what was being done to some of my family members. Right? People got when God's talking to you and talking to you and talking to you and talking to you and talking to you. I'm tired of saying talking to you. And you chose to. You choose to close your ears and close your eyes and shut your eyes and be in denial. You have no one to blame. All right? You have no one to blame when you transition. Yeah, I took it there with you because that was the goal. To have me transition. To have me die. Never thought in my entire life that... Well, before meeting these heathens slash Christians, um, I never thought in my life I would have... Had someone that actually would have wanted me to be dead. Like it, it like this never crossed my mind because I'm like, I don't have no enemies. This is before my encounter with Judas and Jezebel. And today the story is different. But it doesn't phase me because it was returned back to sender. And there are things that I already know of the future. Confirmation. That I'm led to stay quiet about. For now. But there will be a time when it's all on paper. Yeah. When God gives you an opportunity to cross paths with someone that has the gift of foresight and you ridicule them, in fact, you try to kill them. That individual is no longer responsible to pass along that warning. You just wait and you see. Yeah, God did tell me. Yeah, I did have that dream. Mm. Some of those dreams are so disturbing. So realistic, like you can... You can smell the scents. You can... Feel the anguish. You can hear. 
the screams you can It's serious, people. <laughs> I'm being led to say it's best to stay on God's good side. <laughs> That's a true story, okay? It's, it's really best to stay on God's good side because once you lose that protection, you no longer can run with the wolves because they turn on you. Be careful what you look for. This is a time of significant spiritual growth and healing for you. You are protected during these times by the love and strength of the Divine Mother. Relax and allow your transformations to happen. Your divine guardian protects you now. Let go. Trust unconditionally in what is happening for you. As there is only one, as there is only divine love beneath the surface of the present situation I'm hearing it doesn't happen to you it happens for you the next card is Deeply rooted balance. In bloom. Karma is all over the world. Have you been all around the world? There's something I'm hesitating to say, but I'm I'm being held to it that I must say. There's someone that, due to karma, has, that has lost the connection. And the song... That I hear in the background Been around the world And I, I, I I can't find my baby I'm sure most of you have heard it I don't know where I don't know how Why she's gone away And I don't 
need to listen to it. It's been a while since I've heard it, but... Karma, as the world turns. Hmm. Next card is Joker. <laughs> full of jokes, full of game. Class clown, right? Does the class clown get promoted? Or is the joke on them? Question. Next card is unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. I just recalled a video that I saw once when I used to watch those TikTok videos and there was a young lady who was sharing how love Died. She did it in an artistic way, by way of poetry, and shared that every time she forgave, part of her never recovered. She forgave again. She forgave again. And then there came a point where there was nothing left of her that could be used to forgive. And I could honestly relate to that. And this is why as hard as my journey has been because I am deserving of love God bless me with love. And I was able to release all the parts of me that was energetically decaying Due to a connection with the unclean. This is why we're being called to separate ourselves.
and being encouraged to fraternize with the equally yoked. Because what don't mix, don't mix. Have you ever seen oil full of gook and mess? And try to mix it with pure water? It will never come to harmony. It's just not meant to be. In fact, water doesn't need to blame oil. And oil doesn't need to blame water because it was never meant to be. It was an encounter that was part of the journey. And allowed them to awaken to the lessons that were being taught and the lessons that were being learned. And so there is no reason To continue to hold on to whatever's dead and gone. As you hold on to what's dead and gone, parts of you begin to decay. Your hand, your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your back, your head death Is stillness. You don't move, you just lie there. And so, confirmation in life, when you refuse to release what's dead, you remain stagnant. You don't move. You decay internally. Some of you are now affected with disease because you refuse to release Louise Hayes, an author, speaker, successful and well-known, 
wrote a book, I believe it's called How to Heal Yourself. Associates certain emotional blockages or emotional releases that need to be had and your emotional wellness is connected to your physical manifestations in relation to your diagnoses those of you with high blood pressure those of you with eczema, those of you with asthma, those with you. Throw chakra games. <clears throat> Whenever the truth is being told, evidence. of the efforts of keeping you in the dark. They don't want this word out. They don't want you to know that mind, body, and soul is connected. When you heal yourself emotionally, you heal yourself physically. When you heal yourself mentally, you also heal yourself physically. It's all connected. When you heal yourself spiritually, you heal yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. There are certain cancer patients that that had have shared their stories on documentaries and Connected the dots with angers that they've held on to, hurt, pain that they refused to release, and how it manifested in their physical lives. Words that were meant to be said that were not said. Then throat cancer developed. Refusing to hold themselves accountable. In their lustful natures, and cancers developed in those organs. Colon cancers. Issues with their digestive tracts.
due to the neglect of their emotional state of well-being. Why? Priorities. I don't have money to go pay a counselor, but I have money to buy a designer bag. <laughs> I don't have money to get on medication, but but I have money to buy shoes. With red bottoms. I don't have money to go to that retreat. I don't have money to. Go on that vacation. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. And you manifest. I don't. And you. Remain in lack. And I don't. When you hear counseling, is that voice inside saying yes? It may be a whisper, so listen. Listen attentively. Might you need to be on an antidepressant? Is that voice saying yes? Is that crowd keeping you in dysfunctional behavior? Is that voice saying yes? It's a whisper. Listen in. In fact, all the answers that you need are already inside. When you're ready, check out the files. Next card, is it, is this the season of blossoming? A spiritual gift of healing is coming to you. Be open. without expectation or preconceived notions and allow the healing energy to help you find the best solution for any situation that does not appear to be as it should be expect your miracle enter the chamber of healing Next card. Sad. Disappointment. Divorce. Separation. Breakups. A major disaster of some sort. No hope for revival. Learning from past hardships. You may be the victim of another person's betrayal. 
And what I'm sensing from this card is anger. A never-ending degree of anger. <laughs> You're being told to enter the chamber of healing. All right? What's done is done. I'm going to say it again. For those of you that like denial, <laughs> what's done is done. Enter the chambers of healing. Those of you that are telling yourselves, I don't know how, I don't know how to do it. Have you ever checked yourself? <laughs> <coughs> No, seriously, sometimes you're called to check yourself, okay? Like those times when it's not adding up, when it's not making sense for you to check yourself. Because whatever it is that you really want to do, You find a way to get it done. Isn't that right? Employ that same energy. I'm being told you leaned on those you took for granted. long enough this is why your healing must come from within it is not authentic healing until it comes from within it's not someone touching you. It's not someone blowing on you. It's not someone praying for you. It's not someone telling you you're cured. It's you doing the work. Now the challenging news Is it's not going to be easy. It's not going to get done quickly. In fact, it only stays in effect if you stay. In line. You know those of you that say, God, I need this. If you do this, I'll do this. I need this. If you do this, I do this. And he does this and you don't do this. Is that you? Because God can give you a healing and he can take it back. That's a fact. Remember that.
You can play games with yourself, but you you can't, you won't, and you will not ever succeed at playing games with God. Or the chosen that can't fake it. We're being called to walk in our truth. That is your cure. Saying how you feel. Living in your truth. And choosing you. Not who your family expects you to be. Not who your friends expect you to be. Not who you thought you was going to be. But authentically you. Who are you? Do you know? can you claim you have undying love for an individual when you've never loved yourself? Do you love the mask? The shadow or the truth? Which one are you? How do you present yourself? Who do you see in the mirror? Do you even unmask yourself? Do you see all those things that you've been avoiding? Having a vision of Someone walking in front of a mirror and every time she walks alongside of the mirror, she looks away, she looks down, she avoids it. You see, a sign of spiritual (laughs) detox in demand is when you can't even look at yourself in the mirror. When the darkness inside begins to seep outside. When it begins to affect your environment,
and the people that you cross paths with. A spiritual detox is in order, people. Now the next card is Calling in your soulmate I'm being called to repeat something That I shared yesterday Everyone has free will So asking God to take someone's free will and demanding that they be with you will never manifest. Calling in your soulmate is giving the energy of love. It's prayer, it's affirmation, it's visualizations, it's that is what will help you to come together. But I've seen the funniest things on the internet. Oh, just write this person's name. I don't even know how many times, what, a hundred, three times, 36 times, whatever times. Just keep writing the person's name down. Yeah, that type of foolishness. Um, Or saying the person's name over and over and over in desperation and over and over. Making a fool of yourself over and over. Get over it. That part um, That's not of a high vibration When you call in your soulmate It should be in the mindset of I am a spiritual being having a human experience. And so it's not what you want, confirmation. It's not what you want, it's what you need. A lot of you thought you wanted A. And now for sure, you down with C. God, take A away. Please take A away. Take A away. I don't want to hear from A. I don't want to see A. I don't ever care to see A. Till infinity, God. Take A away. (laughs) Been there, done that. question yeah but there are those you thought you wanted right you thought you couldn't live without you thought (laughs) 
where your everything, right? And God allowed you to go through some experiences and you woke up to the fact, nah. God is everything. And after God, I show up for self. I am everything. And as you make peace with the truth, you open up the doors. To what's new. What God. Has for you too. What makes you compatible with your divine soul. Partner. Is your soul's journeys. The elevation. The purification. The edification that you give each other. Next card is solar plexus. God will give you the willpower you need to push through. Is that a confirmation? I said God will give you (laughs) the willpower you need to push through. That's a promise from him to you. Acts. And you shall receive. And those of you that meditate. That are open minded. Quote unquote. You may want to experience your requests with your palms open to God. With the declaration, I am ready to receive. Make me ready to receive because I want to be ready to receive. And once he's made you ready, I am ready to receive. Use visualization. Be vocal about it. Be physical about it. Humble yourselves before God. Stay in your lane. Respect that chain of command that God is God is God. Balancing, give and take, directing and flowing, play and solitude are always, are always to heal the relationship between the inner masculine 
and feminine energies. Connection with the body is the most powerful form of healing for the feminine energy. As it holds the secrets to divine feminine wisdom. So dance, sing, and play. I had a good day yesterday. And I'm sure it's because I decided I woke up deciding I'm going to have a good day. And I did what it took. I connected with those that love me. I connected in all my love languages. I sang, I danced, I played. Power is earned, people. Don't believe the hype of it's bought. Don't believe the hype that it's It can be stolen. Don't believe the hype that you can imitate it. Don't believe the hype. Isn't that the song? Next card. Learn about and make use of precious stones and herbs. I'm being led to say Incorporate them in your spiritual journeys. Ask God what direction you should take with them. Learn as much as you can. What healing can come from these herbs... And the symbolic energy associated with those precious stones. One of the most popular ones is the rose quartz. And it's associated with self-love. There are many. 
In fact, there are books that you can purchase or websites that you can visit. Lavender You see it on the market The mainstream market For Relaxation, correct? Who determined That it was Okay Godly (laughs) To utilize Lavender For relaxation Who determines if that's demonic or not (laughs) You see the reason why I say this is because There are some who are ready to say Oh When you say lavender can also be used for protection You're leading people astray Stay in that same energy When you purchase your Lavender bubble baths Okay The spiritually inclined Understands how everything connects For example In my research I've uncovered Something interesting about roses They symbolize Love That is common knowledge However Some people utilize rose oil with intention. The intention of being in love, whether it is in communication, Or in behavior, in interaction, but the thorns come up, right? When something's out of order, perfect balance, huh? You're sweet. And you don't play Right And this is why some people Utilize Rose oil Because It comes in that feminine energy And that masculine energy Keeps them balanced Right? So before you open your mouth and say, that's low vibrational. Oh my goodness. Utilizing roses and rose oils and where's my cross? Give 
give me a clove of garlic. It's time to stop pretending, people. It's time to stop pretending of the things that you already do that you pretend that you don't do. Some call it who do. Is that you too? (laughs) Although I associate that with certain cultures, per se, I do know all cultures incorporate certain systems. The word is coming to me. Superstitions. In their activities. They use champagne to celebrate. They use OJ to start the day. They use. You you see what I'm saying? It's just. It's life. It's what works for you. Um, I believe you should follow your own intuition. And trust in God and let him lead you. But there's a reason why using olive oil to anoint people came about. It came from the gift of thought. What did it represent? What does it symbolize? Why is it certain churches use incense? What is it about that smoke? Why is it when the area needs some type of intervention because it's not smelling right in there? And someone lights a match. Why why is it? Why is it? Why is it not as bad as saging? Why? Why is it? Can I get real with y'all? Why is it? Are we getting whitewashed? Or is it brainwashed? Confirmation. Or is it brainwashed? Or is it conforming? Or is it just being weak? It's just the question. Just some food for thought. But in all that I I shared with you, it's nothing I'm recommending to you. Nothing besides do your research. Read a book. Gain knowledge. Protect yourself. Teach your families to protect themselves. Moving on. Next card is recovery. There is a need to address 
deep-seated ancestral wounds that are impacting your current circumstances in the form of emotional and mental imbalance. As I just shared, we have our own ways of doing things, traditions, cultures. Things are passed now. Energies are also passed down. Emotional and mental problems. What are you doing to bring healing? Or are you just passing it down? And waiting for your kids to figure it out. Next card is Develop spiritual practice. Protection. That's on you. That's your decision. Let me repeat this. That's on you. I just share the messages and I interpret the cards and I pray for your best. Nothing less. The next card calls for you to be Vocal. You need to communicate more. But I'm also being told you need to be solution oriented. Stop the complaining. Stop the he say, she say. Stop the woe is me. Pity parties. And organize. Be wise. <laughs> Next card. Longevity protects against infirmities. It seems like we're we're following that same theme. Protection, protection, protect. Seems like we need to be protected, right? How do you protect yourself? You pray. What else you do? Practice self-care. Because as you practice self-care, you are balanced. And as you are balanced, you are then in the energy of performing at your best. So when it's time to have your rest, do that. When it's time to have a talk, do that. When it's time to drink water, do that. When it's time to take a walk, do that. When it's time to pamper yourself with a lavender bubble bath, do that. When 
When you want to smell like roses, do that. Protect yourselves, people. I say that in all sincerity. And I heard a confirmation. Next card. Societal factors and restrictive circumstances that hindered our ancestors' ability to express themselves freely could be impacting you now. A blockage in creativity or imbalance in your communication skills are an indication of lingering trauma and karma around the throat center. You see? The things that you don't want to say because you don't want to be judged. You don't want to be outcast. Those things. Those secrets. How dare you be authentic. How dare you think for yourself? How dare you protect yourself? A whole bunch of how dare you's. Meanwhile, they're happy you have no clue that they on it. <laughs> I said they're on it. Trust and believe. They do what they do. They do it too, just in their closets. That's all. Or what they call them, their prayer rooms. Next card, create harmony. Coexist. Peace. Winning. I sum that all down to respect yourself. When you respect yourself, you coexist. You respect your differences and your boundaries. Next card. My God. Delivery from those who seek to oppress. Are you being oppressed today? Are you having it your way? Have you ever had it your way? Next card. This card indicates prosperity is cultivated through forming stronger connections to a spiritual practice. Why is that? Could it be we are spiritual beings having a human experience 
in that order. Just the question. Next card. Knowledge. Enlightenment. Education. Passion. Raise energy. Sounds positive. Sounds aligned to my highest good. Sounds about right. Enjoy water therapy. Whether you go swimming, you take your bubble baths, you whatever it is. Incorporate that in your self-care routines. I'm also being guided to tell some of you There are times your body needs to detox. Add some salt to the water. Pray on it. Ask God to detox you of whatever that isn't aligned with your highest good. Whether it is mind, body, or soul. Cleanse me, God. Let that be your morning ritual. Cleanse me, God, as you take your showers. Cleanse me, God. Anything that is not in alignment with my highest good. Any psychic attacks. Any darkness sent my way. Any cleanse it. Let it fall down. Let it go down the drain. Let it. That's a ritual, isn't it? Think before you speak. Next card. Protection from one's enemies. Here we go. Protects against disasters. Here we go. This card indicates an opportunity to enhance the expression of our life force through deeper connection to our healing and our ancestral practices. Keep it in high vibration, y'all. You know what's high vibration and you know what's low vibration. And that's the truth. When in doubt, the answer is no. Okay. There's a need to build a stronger connection with your higher power and your ancestors for the enhancement and the quality of your life. Last card of the day. Be well, y'all. Be well. Peace.